and welcome back if you're just joining us this is good morning kenya on kbc channel one and thank you for tuning in and making us your channel of choice my name is mike Megu, and now we shift gears to other matters after that fascinating segment with victor Law. now we look at st storytelling uh, through the lens especially in the slum areas and in studio to help me with this conversation i'm joined by jerry muchura who is the founder of Photo start media. Karibu sana to the program. Thank you very much. And on my far left, I have Fe Felix Ragen, who is a former student and also a peer trainer. Karibu sana to the program. Thank you. Now, if I start with you, uh, Njeri. What was the drive behind offering free uh, photographic uh, classes to youth uh, in the slum areas? Um, so, thank you very much. Karibu sana. First, I will. Slight correction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am the global head of programming mm -hmm. at Photostat. Mm -hmm. uh, our founder is David Lehman. Mm -hmm. He is a New York based photographer. Uh -huh. So he came here in 2016 and realized that um, kids like pictures and it's another way of them learning. So that's how we managed to bring about the you know, curriculum of photography and to bring them to underserved areas mm -hmm. where now they can learn how to tell their stories their own way mm -hmm. and also learn key life skills mm -hmm. uh, within the lessons of photography. We usually say we don't make photographers. Mm -hmm. We use photography as a vehicle to learning. Yeah. So what does photography, st storytelling through photography really mean? So there's a quote that says, um, a picture is worth a thousand words. So we take that and we say that the, our youth have a lot to say they don't have the avenues to say it mm -hmm. so we give them this space this uh, skill where they can photograph and tell the stories their own way mm -hmm. Chinua Chebe said until the lion learns to tell the story mm -hmm. the story will always glorify mm -hmm. the hunter yes so now as African lions we have a lot to say. People have been telling our stories. Mm -hmm. They come to our ghettos, they come to um, underserved areas mm -hmm. and tell a particular story mm -hmm. that's not the real true story on the ground. Mm -hmm. So the youth are like, even us, we want to, to say something. Mm -hmm. That is not what is, you know, that is not the truth. Mm -hmm. Let us learn how to tell the truth. Yes. And that's now the skill of storytelling through photography, call it visual storytelling through the lens. Mm -hmm gives them the key skills to put together their thought into a series of pictures or a single picture mm -hmm. and now put it out there. Now with the digital space as wide open as it is, they have a bigger channel or uh, funnel to put out you know, information about who they are, where they are in real time. Mm -hmm. In a case like we were in Kibagare slum in Loresho area, mm -hmm. And we taught them photography skills, we taught them how to package stories and all of that. So whenever there's like, for example, fires in the area, our students, our former students are the ones at the forefront saying, hey, this is what is happening, taking pictures on social media and help comes to them faster mm -hmm. as opposed to, you know, that word of mouth, oh, kuna chomeka, oh, this is happening. Mm -hmm. And help takes longer to, ca to get there. Mm -hmm. They can also document the process of, hey, there's a fire, this is what we are doing. And just put updates real time. Mm -hmm. And now people can say, hey, you know what, how can we help? How can we engage? So that's what one of the impacts that we have seen through this visual storytelling, mm -hmm. through the lens. Now, let's talk about uh, when you started. Yes. Uh, penetrating into these slums how how did you go about it because um, some of the some of the uh, youth and the, uh, the people who live within uh, slum areas are not so much as exposed to opportunities so how did you start this initiative and managed to reach the people that you you, you have impacted so far so when our executive director came uh -huh. he I think he saw a news piece uh -huh about an organization working with the slum. So he decided to just reach out. And when he landed, he went there with his camera and interacting with the youth. They want to see the gear, they want to take pictures and he realized there's a need. So he went back and then sat down and then came up with Photostat. Mm -hmm. So what we do when we get to underserved areas, we work with partners, partner organizations on the ground. So we don't actually come, hey, we are here. We work with uh, partners on the ground that will um, marshal up the youth in one space. We come with our photographers, we come with our trainers, we come with cameras as well. Mm -hmm. 
and now interact and work with them. What that has happened is everywhere we go and we have we leave a mark, mm -hmm. you know, this is what has been happening. And we realized that by working with partners who are already on the ground, what we come and do is we just add value to what they have and increase their impact on the ground because it's not a photo start thing. We work always in partnerships with communities and organizations on the ground to just give them new opportunities or mental shifts that, you know, you don't have to be, you know, the conventional way, go to school, go to university, go to college. Most of them will never do that. Mm -hmm. But if you have now this digital skills and extra skills, you can actually open doors for yourself. And that's what we have seen. Not necessarily like creating photographers. Some of them have realized, hey, I have a knack for this kind of work that ties in with photography. And they have gotten jobs that way. Yes. So we are pushing a mental shift that the conventional way, if it doesn't work for you, mm -hmm. there's a whole playing field that has open doors that you can create and open for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Felix, talk about your journey uh, in, in learning photography and now that you are a former student, eh? yeah. and now you are a peer trainer. Talk about that journey. Okay, well, first, uh, my journey has been rough, I can say that. Uh, First, I learned through I learned about PhotoStart through our organization that is Simama, mm -hmm. that is partnering with the uh, PhotoStart. So our director, Mr. Steve, introduced us to PhotoStart, and uh, we took a, a training, like a three to four months training. Then, after that, we enrolled in uh, peer training class. Mm -hmm. So. Photostat as a, what do you call it? Photostat as a, a, a initiative. Each one teach one. So if you, are, you have been through that system, so after training to be a photo, after you have undergone the training to be a, a, a photographer, mm -hmm. the next training will be how to, to be a trainer. So we have been enrolled in those, in those nini those uh, program two programs right now i'm a trainer thanks to photostat and uh, their training is good and right now i'm apart from the photostat thing i'm earning i have a uh, side hustles in photography related fields so i'm earning through photography that's what i do so as a peer trainer, you interact with the various uh, youths within, fr from wherever you come from. Yeah. Now, how do you engage them and uh, em enlighten them on the opportunities that are there, especially when it comes to digital skills like photography? Okay, uh, as a trainer, I'm able to pass my skills to, to, the, to those to those photographers that are upcoming mm -hmm. and uh, one thing uh, I will talk about PhotoStart. PhotoStart as a program that they bring mentors, those people who have made it in this field. So that one acts as a motivation to the photographers so I think that's how we do. Uh, Let's talk about the criteria that you use uh, to enroll these uh, youth in the slum mm -hmm. and teach them these skills. What, what do you look for uh, when, when you're enrolling uh, the youth in these programs? So, as I said, we partner with organizations that are already on the ground. Okay. So what they do is we rely heavily on them to get the students and vet them. Mm -hmm. Because one of our key requirements is discipline mm -hmm. and commitment. It's a 12-week program. It looks like it's a very short time, but it's really intensive. And how we train, it's so that in class you come, you sit, you learn, and then you go. We invoke real life situations and scenarios. So for example, if you're given an assignment, uh, you have a deadline to bring back the assignment. That's the same way if you go to the workplace mm -hmm. and you have a client, they need their work mm -hmm. at a certain time in a certain way. So those are some of the things that we mm -hmm. do. So we require our students to be committed, uh, to be disciplined, and to be at least trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Because 
we have cameras. Yes. You know, we can come with a camera and then someone just, because we don't know the area, and then they can run away with them. Mm -hmm. So, um, one of the, the key things that we ask for is commitment, discipline, and trustworthiness. Yes. And now the partner continues with the vetting. Because after our, you know, classes are two and a half hours, yeah. when we leave, the partner still stays with the children mm -hmm. or with the youth. Mm -hmm. So, and they continue with other programs with them. Yes. Yeah. So uh, what demographic are we talking about at, at, at this point now? We are talking about uh, the youth. These are 17, 18 mm -hmm. to 25. Mm -hmm. But we also have our younger learners who are now 12 to 17. Mm -hmm. And those ones we work with, you know, institutions of learning. Yes. As part of their club system. Mm -hmm. Where we come like now after, you know, Fridays for clubs and we work with them and we just scaffold their curriculum and also work on their creativity. Mm -hmm. We have worked with um, some organizations, some cool schools in Kibera and also worked with one in on Thika Road. It's called Kenya Community Center for Learning, KCCL. It's a school for special needs kids. So when we are there, we, they have their regular learning, mm -hmm. but then we have seen that using photography is it's another skill set for them to learn how to focus. Mm -hmm. Because there are some skills that you have by using the camera or by thinking about a picture mm -hmm. that helps impact the learning itself mm -hmm. in class. Yes. yes. When you talk about telling stories through the lens, it's not only about taking pictures. We also have to think about empathy for the photos that you are taking. Talk about the role of empathy in capturing authentic stories, especially in slum areas, and uh, yes, through photography. So empathy is it's a broad subject. Yes. Because you want to tell the story, mm -hmm. but then the person that you're photographing can be in dire straits. You know, so we have to understand the human aspect and human dignity mm -hmm. of the subject, mm -hmm. regardless of the story that you are telling. So we have seen, you know, pictures of like kids in the slums, they're dirty with flies all over and all that and all that. Mm -hmm. Is that a dignifying picture? No. But then how can we tell the story mm -hmm. of that situation mm -hmm. without breaking someone's dignity? Mm -hmm. So we have learned... Um, what we teach is how do you see that story and how best can you tell it? Mm -hmm. So it's a skill that we bring out and teach the children or the youth. I call them children because they're like all of them are my children. <laughs> <laughs> but we teach the youth that you have to always safeguard the person that you're taking a picture of. Yes. If it, they don't have to see the face, mm -hmm. if you can tell the story without showing the face, mm -hmm. then do it. Yes. Because once you take a picture and it's out there mm -hmm. and someone's face is there, mm -hmm. they will always be, you know, it's, like a, it's a permanent marker mm -hmm. that this person is always like this. Mm -hmm. So we try to see creative ways of telling the story authentically mm -hmm. while safeguarding the subject's dignity. So it's, it's all about changing what the mainstream photography has been doing all over the years? Yes. Oh, yes. Now, Bona Felix, now yes. talk about how this program... Uh, has impacted you in terms of um, opening more opportunities for you, besides the fact that you are a peer trainer? Oh. <coughs> so, one, uh, photography, for me, is a tool for social change. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in our areas, we do, maybe, let's say, issue that the county's issue, mm -hmm. maybe the garbages, the whatever. So yes. we can lobby we can lobby for resources through photography. Yes. Taking good pictures, mm -hmm. then sending sending it to the relevant authority or posting and tagging them mm -hmm. so that things can happen. Mm -hmm. So number two uh, I can say about employment. So currently uh, I'm attached I'm, I'm a sport photographer. Ah, nice. So I'm attached to at a certain team, uh -huh. like football team, and they are paying me right now. Yes. So I take them pictures, uh -huh. and then at the end of the month, I have something. Yes. Apart from that, I can say for Photostat, I'm still working with them. Okay. I I'd also want to hear from you. You know, as a photographer in these uh, and, uh, these slum areas, 
yeah. your perspective is different from what an outsider photographer would would would, would view the, the the area so i would love to know from you what does those two advantages uh, those two perspectives mean to you and the advantages that it brings because I've, uh, like for instance let's say i'm a photographer i'm from the outside and let's say i'm coming to take a photograph uh, photograph in kibra how does that pers my perspective and yours as a person who is uh, from kibra uh, bring advantages in the, in this area okay first mm -hmm. advantage one I think uh, since I'm from that area, mm -hmm. I have the good rapport with the community. Like, so I can take any picture that I want, mm -hmm. and like uh, the person who is coming from outside. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the advantages. Jay, and I I'll also to hear, want to hear your, your your view on the same because perspectives differ. Mm -hmm. Because, for instance, uh, if a person from outside comes and takes a different photo, we might take the, the same photo but have different perspectives. How the, how does those two perspectives merge in terms of uh, advantages? So, I'm a documentary photographer uh -huh. by trade. I've been doing that for I think the past 15 years. Mm -hmm. So I understand perspectives and biases. Mm -hmm when you come into new areas. Mm -hmm. So as a photographer, you know, traveling and going, taking pictures and everything. Mm -hmm. The first time I came to Kibra, we all know the mental picture that exactly. when you hear Kibra, it is uh, flying toilets, it is this, it is this, it is this. Yes. If you hear uh, Kariobangi or Chocolate City, it is this and this and this. Mm -hmm. So the first time I get there and I'm like, okay, so I'm already biased. Mm -hmm. And I have come with so I have to look for the true story. But who better to tell me that true story than the people who live there? Mm -hmm. So by training uh, youth from under-resourced areas, mm -hmm. what we're saying is, you know your story. You know how best to tell it. Mm -hmm. And if you have the skills, you can start changing the narrative, mm -hmm. picture by picture. Mm -hmm. I, who come in as a, you know outsider, I have the gift of, you know, like, zooming out because I'm not in there so I my lens is not uh, filtered by whatever is happening mm -hmm. but as as much as that is an advantage it's also a disadvantage because that is already a bias mm -hmm. so by putting mentors as Regan has said who are either from or outside mm -hmm. they start cultivating like a two a two-prong perspective yes. or a two-prong way of seeing it mm -hmm. yes we live in Kurogocho, yes, we live in Kariobangi, and this is what is happening. Mm -hmm. But can we tell it differently? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we say is how you see yourself and how people see you. So those are key lessons that we have. Mm -hmm. When we ask you how do you see yourself, we are looking for pictures of, you know, pictures that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Show us the real area that you live in. Mm -hmm. How people see you, now that is, if you Google Kibra, those are the pictures that you will see. Yes. So how do we start shifting? And by them putting their pictures out there and creating content that is trying to shift the narrative, that it will impact me as an outsider to say, hey, Kibra is not like this. Mm -hmm. Karibang is not like this. There are certain things that are different in these areas. And it will force us, outsider photographers, when we come into that place, not to just come with our biases, but also to open our eyes to everything else that is happening so it's a, a, a way of creating open-mindedness and uh, doing away with the stereotypes that people have especially when it comes to slum areas exactly because we are shifting perspectives mm -hmm. yes on that note we take a short break we'll be right back Welcome back. My name is Mike Miguel. This is a Good Morning Kenya. And we are talking about storytelling through the lens, especially in the slum areas. And in studio, I am joined by Jerry Muchura, who is the founder of, uh, who is uh, part of the Photostat Media, and Felix uh, Ragen, who is a former student and a peer trainer. And with me here, I have several photos that uh, have been taken here. Yes, I don't know if you can see it uh, very well. And I would love to talk about, you. Earlier, earlier on when we were talking, 
off camera. We are, you told me there are photos taken by 12 year olds? Yes. They are good photos. These are good photos. But yeah, they have awesome done a good photos. job. Yes. So how, how, how is the experience of uh, training these young ones when it comes to, especially in these skills, because uh, photography, photography is not uh, <laughs> skills that you can just wake up and start doing. Yes. yes. So this is, I feel for me, it's my happy place. Mm -hmm. Because once you come in and they don't understand anything about photography, mm -hmm. or the ones that do think about, you know, selfies and all that. Yes. But then when you see the it's landing and they are perspective changing and mm -hmm. then the kind of pictures that they start taking. Mm -hmm. For me, it's my f most fulfilling uh, part of my job. Yes. So like something like this, kids mm -hmm. are in a, you know, underserved areas, they have never seen big cameras. So to see a 12 year old handling a pro camera and even teaching someone else, Apana, this is how you do it. Watch out, And then to see the result of that. Yes. Happiness. It's perfect. Now, Felix, yes. tell us how you, you, have you you, you, took, you you took some of these photos, some of these uh, photos. Uli uli piga moja easy amani several or any any of your photos here, or you could tell us a little bit on a story like, like what was what was the idea behind such a photo? Okay. Uh, First, in the setup, setup here like. You can do even your camera. Okay. Oh, this one. Yes. Yeah. So first, in the setup here, so. like our community, uh -huh. the ghetto that you are from. Then, no pata Indo reality a community. So, who you, Indo, ni kama na baby nas sister kem dog. Yeah, and yes, ni kama ni kama parwa ke sasa. Isa Indo ka parwa ke. Yes. Alafu. Apa kuna like shule, so awa ni awa na kada disadvantage. Ino 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 juki dogo. Okay dogo. So ukiangalia hizi wadingi kwa apa ni like a school hizi kinda gata ni zinda gondo. So like ukiangalia ni kama kwa disadvantage wana try kuangalia. So they na they na they na meaning yeye picha wana tamani kwenye shule lakini. Lakini sasa wana, yeah, 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 wana become, wana, they are longing yeah. for something yeah, that... But uh, sasa, ki finance na resources, uh, but... Uh, uh, yes. Hapa, ebu tuongelele mambo ya kutafuta pesa. Hii, 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 photo kama hii, hii, picha kama hii ni kama... Hii na kaa ni kama wedu, ama ni some sort of modeling. So, talk about the... Ongelele ya mambo ya kutafuta pesa na kitu kama, kitu kama hii. Because, uh, in as much as we talk about photography. Kila mse anafunzo ana, ana hii, hii maneno, anatafuta pesa. Yes. So, what is the, the idea behind such a photo? So, first, these are documentaries, uh -huh. like pictures in a tell story. Uh -huh. Zina jaribu kutuonesha something. Eh? Uh -huh. So, you're asking how to na earn through is. Uh -huh. So through, kuna through my exhibition, mm -hmm. like picture ka hizi tuneze exhibit maali Aha. to for a room ala photo kuja, like wakinunua, tuna, tuna ingiza Napata pesa. Napata kakitu. Yes. A story no hiyo sasa. Alafu pia, <laughs> when you look at a picture like this, yes. first, hii community, ukiangalia hii, utapata wapi kitu kai? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Ushanza kujuliza maswali uku ni wapi, uh -huh. alikamaji huko, uh -huh. and all that. So in a game interest. Alafu, as he said, ukeka kwa... No picture, is it? Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Ukeka malika nini, exhibition and whatnot, uh -huh. mseta kama wanei picture. Uh -huh. And who's the photographer? Even on, on a land, the next job. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it's about opening opportunities for Every the other door that you can. So the, the fo photography aspect is the first door that you open and then get into a room full of opportunities. And for you to pick whichever you want. Ah, nice. Now, let's talk about uh, the visual elements of storytelling when it comes to photography. I'd like to hear from you. How effective um, are these skills in telling the experiences about uh, the life within the slums? Um, so... Photography and the skills that come, mm -hmm. again, we say we're not, we're not teaching 
or making photographers. We are making storytellers. So we teach photography, we teach micro video, we teach content creation. Mm -hmm. Because first the digital space in Mefunguka. Yeah. So you have our kids are on TikTok, mm -hmm. they are on Instagram, they're doing Insta stories and all of that. So you can have like a day in the life of. So where we have thought at the you know, Mse Wakibra Kaziake tu ni kulala the whole day, mm. alafo namka mrando. Sigu, naenda kurandranda. Eh, <laughs> you can find that it's actually different. Yes. And if they tell these stories, yeah. again, that perception change <laughs> begins. Um, the skills of photography are not just, again, pictures, because we have focusing, we have uh, collaborations, we have uh, teamwork, we have digital skills mm. that are carried in the vehicle of photography. Mm -hmm. So by teaching them photography and visual telling skills, we also teach them the science, the art, and the business of photography. These skills now open further doors for them. So yes, you can tell a story. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can set up. Yes, you can see the key moments. You can capture pictures. Mm -hmm. You know what to do with a phone, mm -hmm. and you know what to do with a camera, camera. Yes. Apart from that, what else can you do? Mm -hmm. What other value can you add to whoever that you are encountering? Yes. And how do you best package it mm -hmm. for the different forms of media that we have? So we are talking about a holistic approach to skill development. Yes. That is nice. Now, so far, how many youths have you impacted in your efforts to uh, uh, impart these storytelling skills through the lens in, in those areas? So first, we're not just in Kenya. Mm -hmm. We are in Uganda, Rwanda, South Africa, Bolivia, America, Iraq, and expanding. Now, we have run 77 programs since we have started. Wow. Uh, I think almost around 2,000 students have passed through our hands mm -hmm. in these different areas. And both face-to-face -face and online. Yeah, because this skill, again, is transferable. It's a very, very practical skill. As long as you have a phone, mm -hmm you can learn how to take pictures mm -hmm. and do visual storytelling. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a camera, it's just an upskilling. Yeah. Yes. So, so far, we've done yeah, 77 programs and are almost 2,000 students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Felix, nataka uniambie, e idea, teach one, impact one. Imekuwaje kwako, how has it, uh, how has it impacted you? And how, as a peer trainer, ime, ime kusaidia aje katika kazi yako? Okay, uh, e program ya teach one, each one, teach one, mm -hmm. imekuwa na impact kubwa kwa angu. Kwanza photography, the more una transfer knowledge, the, the more una, una understand better. Mm -hmm. So pande angu, nimekuwa niki train, mm -hmm. so the moment na train, mm -hmm. do the more pia mine endelea kulan, na napiga research. Mm -hmm. So the next time daenda kwa field, na na to something good eh ndio mm -hmm. nimekuwa nikilan mm -hmm. number 2 pia inanipatia skill skill ya ku naweza train now eh mm -hmm. apart from ile kupiga tu picha ta 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 ta, ta. Mm -hmm. but now naweza simama mbele ya wasee niwaambie nao hiki kitu inafanywa hivi na hivi na hivi mm -hmm. so imekuwa na impact poor on my side where do you see yourself uh, doing this kind of this kind of work and reaching more more people especially in the underserved areas Okay, uh... Kuna, na kuuliza nini, unajiona una aje, effort zako hizi za kurich one, teach one, eh? mm -hmm. in a few years, unayona itakuwa na impact gani so far? Okay, uh, and I believe, maybe, let's say in the next, uh, two years from now, uh -huh. I think na, nikona vision ya kukuwa na like, my own class, like, uh -huh my own mentorship program uh -huh. so as I mentor the the others eh? uh -huh. our photographers when you wanna come uh -huh. so design to jerry how to how to design photo start off uh -huh. how to let younger mentors uh -huh. so it's upon you kushke mentors i walk now through the journey so i'm seeing myself nikki one of those mentors uh -huh. like nisa idp amimi uh -huh. please nearly talk uh -huh. uh, jerry i'd love to know the place of um internship apprenticeship in terms of uh, photography skills and storytelling how how do you navigate around those areas so we work with partners partnership. uh -huh. partnerships is like one of my favorite things yes <laughs> because tapping into networks uh -huh. so as photostat we our mandate is to teach but you have I'm, I'm a photographer 
I have a whole association, like Photographers Association of Kenya. Yes. I tap into that and say, hey, me, I have students. They want to learn sports photography. Uh -huh. Who can come and have a master class? Now, at the keyword so to me, a class, ni kujituma. Kujituma, dear. Bas, ukushona mentor. Yeah. Ume, una, una, aneza ku, mlenda pelekana na ee. Yes. Shikilia. Yes. Because that's now what people have been doing. Uh -huh. So we bring in mentors, they have master classes. Mm -hmm. And then if we see someone is going in this direction, mm -hmm. we send them to someone. Yes. Now they have practical on the job uh, training. Yes. And then now from there, mm -hmm. kujituma kwako, mm -hmm. kuta kusaidia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the idea ni kujituma too. Yes. Yes. Now, uh, are there ethical guidelines and responsibilities that uh, anyone telling stories from the perspective of the slum areas should know about? Yes. The key word is safeguarding. Uh -huh. uh, safeguarding should be at the top of your mind. Yes. Whether it's the vulnerable, whether it is children, whether it is women, whatever situation it is, uh -huh. we're not to profit uh -huh. out of the suffering of others, uh -huh. which has been the thing that has been going on. You remember the story of the b baby and the vulture? That is it's like one of the iconic award-winning images. Yes. But, because ethics says, Journalistic ethics says we do not interfere or intervene in the story. Mm -hmm. But there's, there has to be, like, at the top of your mind, mm -hmm. how to safeguard whoever you are photographing. Mm -hmm. So if it's stills that you have, you're in control of, just find a way to just shift your perspective within the storytelling. Mm -hmm. And if something that you cannot really intervene, maybe it's like um, a riot or whatever, mm -hmm we have to either safeguard ourselves first yes. and then now figure a way to tell that story that maintains the dignity of the subject that you're photographing. Yes. Yeah. Bona Felix, yes. Uh, your parting shot. Tunaezambia my youth surge, especially when you're on a tough, easy skills. Okay. Uh, one, photography uh, in a leap. Like, people are running through it. Many example moja. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, for photography to pay you was more build brand yako. So to invest time mob na resources at that point bila ingine kukame mm -hmm. so uta kuna toa tu na toa lakini siku itanza kulipa mm -hmm. utasikia vizuri. Yes. So to my youth na za encourage moso easy my slums kwa tu na easy skills na tunaweza nini na photo start to to join program so you need direction poor. Yes. Yeah. Jerry, your parting shot. Changing the narrative a photo at a time. Mm -hmm. So if we can partner with organizations that are on that are youth based on the ground, mm -hmm. we can spread this the gospel of visual storytelling mm -hmm. further and further and mm -hmm. open up opportunities that would ordinarily not be open mm -hmm. to the youth in such underserved areas. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. There you have it. I've been talking to Jerry Muchira, who is uh, also part of Photostat Media, and Felix Ragen, who is a st former student and peer trainer. The topic has been storytelling through the lens, especially in the slum areas. And one thing that I've learned is we are changing the narrative one photo at a time. This uh, segment comes to a close. Now I have been your host, Mike. Good morning, Kenya. Takes a short break. We'll be right back.